Hello and welcome to another episode of the Why We Travel podcast. Today we want to talk about different ways on how you can accommodate yourself in your travel destination. So one big thing obviously is Airbnb, then Booking.com, hotels and all of that. But there is another way and we want to talk about that. We want to talk about house sitting. For that, I have Brittany Sharman with me today. She runs the Traveling House Sitters website, and there you can find resources you need to start house sitting. She has spent the past five years pre-COVID carrying about 40 homes. She has cared for homes in over 12 countries, including New Zealand, Australia, Italy, France, Greece, Montenegro, Malaysia, Thailand, Ireland, UK, and in the Caribbean, looking after a cat on a catamaran. So that should be an interesting conversation there. So let's say hello to Brittany. Hi, Brittany. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Brittany, house sitting is something that not everyone does or has heard of. Um, give me a bit of an idea how you got into this and a bit of the story on how it works. Yeah, I think just like everyone else, I had no idea about house sitting until I met a friend who was doing it. And we were living over at London in London at the time, um, doing the old Aussies in London for two years. And we met our friend down the park and she showed up with a dog one day and I said, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm house sitting at the moment. And she told us where she was. And it was this beautiful part of London. I mean, we we're all living in share houses at the time. So when I heard where she was, I was like, wow, like maybe we could try this. Um, I knew our visas were ending soon. So we thought maybe we could kind of extend our travels around Europe. So we started doing a few house sits in London and then I've uh, been doing it, then we did it for the next five years and then kind of COVID happened. So I'm kind of easing back into it now, but that's kind of how I got started in it. Okay. Now you're taking basically over someone else's household was like everything. What's the typical scenario? Why do people um, look at, are looking for a house sitter? I think maybe nine times out of 10, it's mainly for the animals. Um, a lot of people just want to keep them in that comfortable environment and they want to head away knowing that they're not in a cattery or a kennel. And then sometimes it can also be like there's a lot of places we've found like Spain, uh, Mexico, France. A lot of people have second homes and they just like to have someone in the home. It might be just for just for security or they might have pools that need to be looked after or a garden. So it can be there's all different types. And then, like you mentioned, we also did the one in the Caribbean looking after a yacht. So that was our first, well, first boat, boat sit. So they, they can't be left by themselves. So every single house is different. Okay. Now, for law, how long can your house sit? I can imagine that people do not leave for months on end. How does that work? Yeah, um, it can really vary. Again, like it could be maybe just for a weekend. I've seen ones upwards of a year. Um, it might be some, they're an expat family I've seen and they're going somewhere for a year and they can't bring animals. Um, and so when I house sit, I usually try and find ones that are at least four weeks. I find that otherwise you're constantly packing up and moving on. So I think anything past a four week mark is quite good. Okay. Now you said that you need to have some, or you have some certain tasks to look after the pets. Uh, what else do you need to do? Um. And there's so many variety of things. It could be just looking after the pets, uh, looking a lot, like I've noticed a lot of house plants at your place, uh, looking after plants, um, pool care, garden care, but it's mainly just about the animals I find. Mm -hmm. What kind of criteria are people looking for when they look for a house sitter? I can imagine that's not always a good fit. Do you have any stories on that? Yeah, I think I... And people always ask this about trying to land a house sit. And I think one of the best things I've found is um, really reading what the person's after and then putting that into your application. So if they mention in the uh, application they have two German shepherds and a large garden, then I would mention in my application, because I do, I do have experience with large, like larger dogs and I'm comfortable walking them, I'd mention that. And I'd also mentioned that I'm comfortable looking after gardens and I enjoy that side of things. So I think that really relating kind of the, the things people are looking for to your skills is one of the best ways. Okay. When it comes to taking over the household, do you expect or do you have your own room, your own bed, or are you taking over the bedroom of the person who's staying there? How does it work? I just want to get a feeling on how do you settle in in someone else's house? Yeah, it, and that's the thing. At first, it does feel a bit weird, like when we first started doing it, but then it just got very normal. Some people will either give you their spare bedroom or they'll give you their bedroom. 
Um, when I did it a lot, like when we were doing it full time, I wasn't, I, you know, I didn't really mind. I was happy to sleep anywhere. It was nice to just be traveling and exploring new places. And you know, you when you're when you're happy to stay in hostels and hotels and that, you're used to staying in all different locations. So to have an actual house is just so much nicer. You've got a kitchen, you can do your laundry. If you're working like we were, you might have a proper desk or something to work at. So that was one of the really, that was one of the big benefits to it. And just the kind of the slow travel as well. It's not like you're jumping from place to place constantly. Mm -hmm. Most travelers have an idea about an area where they want to stay at if they go to a city or country or whatever. How does that work with house sitting? Are you more in suburban areas or how can you pick the area that you want to go? Yep. Um, I think that some people uh, charge for their house sitting and they'll charge and they'll specifically go to that location. I like to look, I like to decide where I want to go and then look for house sits in that area. And I'm happy to do in the city or out in the country. It all kind of depends on what the transport's like. Some homeowners will offer you a car if they know that it's kind of hard to get around. Um, but I'm happy to do either. And I find that it's nice to kind of rather than, because when you're traveling, a lot of the times you are in those hostel or city or hotel kind of zones and you don't really get a good feel for the place. It's nice to be in a neighborhood with people and you get to kind of see all the local shops and everyone going about their day, which is what I really enjoy. Okay. You just mentioned briefly um, payment. How does it work? Do you pay the um, the house the owner of the house or do they pay you or it's a barter agreement what kind of scenarios do you have there yeah the site i use they don't um they they say no payment so both the homeowner and the house sitter sign up for the website and then the website kind of facilitate everything and it's a kind of a win-win situation for both they get their animals cared for and then the house uh the house sitter gets to stay there for free so no money's changed hands and I've always, I've always, I never wanted to charge because I kind of felt like we were kind of getting a good deal already and that I find that it could then also have tax implications and visa implications. So I found it just easier to just um, just not charge for it at all. Mm -hmm. and I, I know some people do actually, though. So what, what kind of person um, is the one, the homeowner renting out? I think it, it takes a special mindset to sort of give your house, your home to a stranger. Yeah, uh, I think I find that people are quite open-minded and same with even my parents when I mentioned, when they said they needed, they asked me to look after their dog and I mentioned, would you get a house sitter? They thought, oh no, like, you know, that's a bit weird having someone in your house. And I'm like, well, wouldn't you prefer that than sending the dog to a kennel? And they were like, oh, yeah, I guess. And I think that, I think once people kind of start to understand the idea and realise that people aren't in it to kind of come to your house and rum rummage through all your things and everything, um, I find that people are quite open to it, the idea, once they understand it. Okay. So you're running a website, as you mentioned, Travelling House Sitters. Give me a bit of an idea of what can I expect there, what kind of resources you offer, and sort of where I need to start if I have never been house sitting or never done house sitting yep um I think that the reason we started the website was really to kind of we wanted a kind of place to put all of our references to kind of show other homeowners what we would what we'd done and as well as that we had a lot of friends and family who were constantly asking us how do we start house sitting and so we started to kind of put together some steps and resources for them so on the website we have a how to get started guide it's pretty much takes you through everything from where you find the house sits to how to start building your references. Because I think one of the main things is, is your applications and your references. Same with a job. Um, people want to see references. And if you don't have any when you're starting out, it can be quite tough. So on there, we have some good tips for people. Um, one of them is to, we used our Airbnb reviews. So we just took a screenshot of all our Airbnb reviews. And that was quite helpful when we were starting out. But another thing we found really helpful was we didn't realize, but we were kind of starting out house sitting. We were applying in around October and we were, kind of, we were sending all these applications out and not really hearing anything. And then all of a sudden November came around and we were getting accepted for all these different, well, everyone was accepting our applications. And we realized it was the holidays. Everyone was kind of trying to get organized for Christmas 
and they were and kind of the supply starts to outstrip the demand so people will just take you on so we found that's a great time to also build your references and we also suggest doing a few house sits around your area with maybe friends or family ask if they need a house there at some point that's another great way to get some references and I think that would give you an idea if you enjoy doing it because sometimes people might not like living in someone else's home or moving around um, and exploring new places so I think that doing it locally is a great great kind of stepping stone into it and then on the website we kind of have all that laid out for you we have all the steps you need to go through to get started house sitting Okay. Are there any specific countries where house sitting is more common than others? Um, I find it's really big in Australia, huge in Australia, huge in Europe, big in America, Mexico. It, it seems that South America and Asia, it's not quite as big, but I find that where there is good opportunities, we're found in Asia and South America is in expat kind of communities. So places like Singapore, Bangkok, places where there's lots of expats, they have animals, they head home for a month at a time and they want house sitters. So that's, a, that, that's kind of an emerging market there. But really Australia, Europe, America, they're great places to start. And there's thousands and thousands of house sitters there. Mm -hmm. Did you have any kind of negative experience during your house sits? Negative experiences. Um, I think I was quite lucky never I've heard of people who have had animals who are sick and pass away um negative experiences probably one we showed up and the woman actually had two extra dogs and she told us and they were quite a handful so that wasn't a negative experience we were just kind of something we would be wary of going forward just really kind of um, making sure that we know exactly what we're looking after um another one was which is not a big deal but we had about two in a row where we didn't ask if they had internet and you show up and there's no internet you've got to kind of sort that out yourself because you kind of think everyone has internet these days but now it's a question I ask um so other than that I haven't had any negative experiences okay no that sounds amazing where can people find out more about your website and the resources there yeah, so it's the travelinghousesitters.com and it's traveling with two L's. So the Australian spelling, which a lot of people kind of get caught up on sometimes. And then we also have a Facebook group. Um, you can find that on our website. And that just has about 20,000 people now. And it's house sitters um, starting out and experience. We have homeowners in there. So there's people asking all sorts of questions. So it's another great place to come and learn a bit more and see if it's for you. Okay, cool. I will put the links in the show notes and you're just one click away. I personally have done a few stints on house sitting, uh, more or less here in South Africa, but I can really recommend that. Um, as you said, it makes a huge difference you, if you have the right place and you have a kitchen and everything, it's a thousand times better than any Airbnb out there. Yeah. So, Are there many <laughs> house so sitting in South Africa? Do you find many They'd... coming up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Oh, cool. That's good cool. to hear there's lots of places still kind of popping up with house sits. <laughs> excellent thanks Brittany for giving us an overview for house sitting and I hope more people will pick you up on that and uh, check out your website awesome thank you very much for having me you're welcome hey Klaus here before you leave I have a question are you a traveler do you have a favorite travel destination or favorite travel experiences that you would like to share with the world then become a guest on the why we travel podcast simply message me and I will get you all the details for becoming an interview guest and then we take it from there that's it for now. I'll see you in the next episode and have a great day.